you're not writing enough songs. The more songs you finish, the better a songwriter you'll become. But as a beginner, it can be really tough writing your first few tunes. There are so many pitfalls for the new songwriter, then it can be hard to know if you're on the right path. So in this video, I'm gonna show you four things you are doing wrong with your songwriting. I'll reveal how this can help you even if you've never written a song before. And I'll give you the most important songwriting tip you'll ever hear. Welcome in. My name's Matt and on this channel, I help people to write their first song. When I first learned to play guitar, I wanted to replicate my heroes. This was all about speed, trying and failing to play at a blistering pace through rip-roaring solos. The problem as a beginner was I didn't have the foundations to be able to play like this. It's often said with a guitar that in order to play fast, you need to be able to play slowly. And I didn't have the patience to do this. I was too eager to show off and couldn't be bothered putting in the effort to get there. These issues that are familiar to anyone when learning to play an instrument also apply to beginner songwriters. One of the big mistakes they make is to try and imitate their favourite songs straight away. If you do this, then you are setting yourself up to fail right from the off. What happens is people are listening to fully produced songs recorded by expert engineers in world-class studios and written by seasoned pros. They then use this as reason to make their songs far more complicated than they need to be. This can include overwriting and trying to cram as many elements into a song as possible. It can also be trying to make long, extended and complicated song sections. What you need to do as a beginner is keep it simple. Write basic sections with just a melody and a few chords. The most important thing to begin with is quantity of completed songs. Then once you have some simple songs written, you can always go back and enhance them or extend them. When starting to play the guitar, my favourite thing to do was learn exotic chords. I'd go through my guitar case chord book, pick out the strangest looking chord and just hang out with it. I'd strum it, arpeggiate it and generally dig into the sound. It even got to the point where a close friend of mine, who was a superb piano player, would marvel at my use of chords on the guitar. Whilst this was a fun thing to do, it wasn't much use for my playing. These chords were often tricky to finger, particularly as a beginner. This meant that it was really difficult to incorporate them into playing other chords, as changing to them took a lot of time and awkward finger placement. Although it was a good guitar workout, it wasn't what a new player should be concentrating on. This is a lesson that beginner songwriters should take into their craft. You don't need many chords to write a song. So many hit songs use only two, three or four chords, and those chords that you do use only need to be simple triads. That is mainly basic, major and minor chords. If you look at the chords in the key, then there are only seven. So many new songwriters are overcomplicating their chord selection. You also make the mistake I did and try and crowbar in all these sorts of exotic chord types. I strongly recommend sticking with basic major and minor chords to begin with. Then if you want to dip your toe into something more interesting, look to add a single seventh chord to one song section. You'll be amazed at how effective and powerful it is to use different chord types sparingly like this. Now, if you're writing certain genres of music, you might need to lean more heavily into certain chord types. For example, fifth or power chords in heavy metal. But it's always good to have a good grasp of the fundamentals and basics before trying to be too clever. Plus, it'll be a breeze to perform your new songs if they are really simple. If you want some help with writing nice, simple songs, then I recommend Hookpad. Hookpad is a musical sketchpad with music theory built in. Follow the link in the description to try out Hookpad for free today and you'll be amazed at how many more songs you finish. Once I'd learned the basics of guitar, I started to get more into soloing. I love being able to create simple backing tracks and then solo over the top of them. It amazed me how you could shape and alter the sound of something with lead playing. And once you get a taste for this amount of musical power, it becomes addictive. And if you're not longing to solo away or lack some of the skill to do it, playing memorable riffs is a similarly pleasing thing to do. If you learn a nice riff from a famous song, it's extremely gratifying to play it at every opportunity. Just try and hold off when you go to the guitar shop. Think how many times people who work there have to listen to mangled versions of classic riffs. This eagerness to wail should be a warning for the guitarist songwriters out there. Most people don't want to listen to your endless guitar solos. They want songs that get to the point and have more structure. Save your extended playing for practice or jam sessions, particularly as a beginner songwriter. Stick to writing simple songs. Use simple chords and simple structures. I'd strongly recommend writing away from your instrument to avoid the temptation of the riffs and solos that you love. Using a tool like Hookpad can really help you here. Then once you've completed some basic songs, you can always go back and fill in with some solos and riffs if that's your thing. But don't run before you can walk. 
I've always enjoyed listening to long songs, particularly more progressive rock and metal, or live jam versions of more popular songs. I think this started when I was a kid, listening to Radiohead's Paranoid Android on repeat on my Walkman. This was the gateway drug to more complex long songs. The length of these songs comes from several factors. Extended song sections, repetition of riffs and motifs within sections, and also repeated use of song parts, with ideas often appearing once early on and then being reprised later, and most importantly, complex song structures. Not just having a verse and a chorus, but multiple parts that help to weave a more complex and varied story together. Writing like this takes a lot of time and skill. It's like a novel versus a short story or poem. If you dive in headfirst without having ever written something before, then you'll quickly become overwhelmed. You need to learn the fundamentals of basic song structure before attempting something more adventurous. Stick to tried and tested layouts like intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro. Yes, it might be boring to do what's been done before, but there's a reason why these formats have endured. And as I've said before, the experience of finishing songs will allow you to work towards more extended and complex song styles. This leads me to the most important songwriting tip that you will ever hear. It's been hiding in plain sight as I've mentioned it a few times already. The biggest thing you are doing wrong is not finishing songs. If you finish more songs, then you'll become a better songwriter. When you're new to songwriting, quantity is better than quality. That's because you don't yet have the skills to write good songs. So you're better off writing as many bad songs as it takes to improve. This is like any other craft. If you were learning to paint, you'd be improving by creating more paintings, and your first attempts would be bad whilst you developed your technique. So don't be too harsh on yourself if your songs don't sound good. Every songwriter has been there. With time and hard work, you'll achieve your songwriting goals. As you've seen, there are so many things that can go wrong when writing a song. It's an absolute minefield for even the most seasoned songwriter. I've created a playlist just for you which will guide you through the pitfalls of writing your first song and beyond. Watch that now to start finishing those songs.